Hey there everyone, today we will talk about how to convert a Yugo website into a progressive web app. So without wasting time, let's jump right into the video. Quick overview of what we will be discussing today. Our first topic of the day is progressive web apps or PWAs. Next up, we will take a closer look at Yugo, a powerful static site generator that's gaining popularity among developers. Then we will select a Yugo theme for our progressive web app conversion. Lastly, I'll show you how to transform your Yugo website into a progressive web app. So let's get into it. What are PWAs? PWAs or progressive web apps are a type of web application that combines the best of both web and mobile apps. Progressive web apps are web applications that are built using standard web technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This allows developers to create PWAs using familiar web development tools and languages. PWAs use these technologies to provide an app-like experience in the browser, making them accessible on a wide range of devices and platforms without the need for platform-specific development tools or languages. PWAs are designed to work seamlessly on any platform or devices with the modern web browser such as your desktop computers, smartphones, and tablets. PWAs are responsive. They load quickly and work seamlessly offline by caching data. They deliver an app-like feel with smooth performance and can be installed on home screens like any other native apps and ensure data security through HTTPS. Now, let's take a closer look at Yugo. What is Yugo? Yugo is a static site generator written in the Go programming language. It is one of the most popular static site generator and is known for its speed, flexibility and ease of use. A static site generator is a tool that takes your content and templates and converts them into static HTML pages. This means that the pages are pre-rendered and served to user directly without the need for a server site application to process them. This makes static site very fast and efficient. Yugo supports a wide range of features such as markdown, image processing, multilingual support, multiple themes, asset management, and many more. Now that we are familiar with Yugo, let's select a suitable Yugo theme for our project. Let's head over to the goyugo.i website and navigate to the themes section. Within the themes section, you will find this theme called Selinger-theme. To get a feel of this theme, you can explore its live demonstration by clicking on Demo. As you scroll down the page, you will come across the Quick Start section. In the prerequisite section, you will find the following requirements. You should have Yugo, Git and NPM installed on your local machine. Now, for installing the theme, you should add this theme as a submodule to your new Yugo site. Then create a new yugo.toml file in the root directory and add the content in it from the yugo.toml file present in the example folder. Then we have to install the required dependencies in the root as well as in the themes folder. So for now, let's just copy this line. Open the terminal and let's start by creating a new Yugo site. To create a new Yugo site, you have to run the command Yugo new site then followed by your Yugo site name. In my case, it's going to be Yugo-PWA. And now let's navigate to this folder. Then let's initialize an empty git repository by running the command git init. After that, let's add the Selinger theme as a submodule, the line that we copied from the Yugo website earlier. Let's paste it over here and then let's enter. So now you will see here that it has done cloning and now to open this folder in our VS Code, let's run the command code followed by period. 
Now the next thing we have to do is copy over the yugo.toml file present in the example folder into the yugo.toml file present in our root directory. So let's copy all of its content and let's close this and in the yugo.toml file let's paste the content that we copied from the yugo.toml file present in the example folder. And let's just uncomment this okay and let's save the file additionally you will need to copy all of the content present in this example site folder this content folder into the root directory so what we will do is we will delete this content folder present into the root and then let's copy this content present in the example site folder and paste it into the root directory so now these files are all copied all right once that done it's time to install the dependencies both into the root and into the theme folder so let's just copy this for now open the terminal and paste this commands okay and let's click on enter and it will start installing all the packages it needs so now it has done installing all the packages it needs into the themes folder. The next thing we will do is copy all of these commands and then paste it and let's click on enter. And now it's installing all of the npm packages into our root directory. After all of it's done at last let's run the command yugo server which will start serving the website on the local host 1313. Let's control plus click on it and there you have your website running amazing right and when you scroll here you will see the content that we have copied from the content folder present in the example side and this is also working light and dark themes system default okay and here we have the post so when we click on it it's working fine as well pretty amazing so once this yugo website is set up now the next step is to convert this yugo site into a progressive web app so to achieve this transformation of turning the yugo site into a progressive web app there are two crucial elements to keep in mind first one is manifest.json file the manifest.json file is another key aspect of progressive web app. It is a JSON file that contains metadata about your web application such as its name, icons and display preferences. Configuring this file properly ensures that your web app can be installed on user devices like a native app. Then we have service worker file sw.js this service worker file is a fundamental component of progressive web app it's a javascript file that runs in the background and handle tasks like caching offline functionality and push notification we will create and configure this file to enhance your website performance and user experience then we have to register the service worker file after creating the service worker file, we will need to register it into our website's code. This step is crucial as it will enable the service worker file to run in the background, providing us the progressive web app features. And then what we will do is we will test the progressive web app into our dev tools. Let's get back to our code. Our next step is to create two essential files which we talked about, manifest.json file and the sw.js file, the service worker file. So let's over to the static folder present in the root directory and let's create the two file sw.js that will be a service worker file and let's create the manifest.json file. And also let's create an image folder in this and let's name it for now IMG which will contain all the icons that we want for the manifest file. Let's start writing the code in manifest.json file. Name and short name defines the name of the progressive web app. Name defines how the application will be listed. 
Short name is the name accompanying the icon on the home screen. Description is a brief description of what your PWA does or represents. Icons define an array of images. These specify a collection of icons that represent your app on different devices and contexts. To include icons of various sizes, you can use this fantastic PWA Builder Image Generator. Here, what you need to do is start by selecting a logo you have designed for your progressive web app and then download it. This tool will generate a folder containing all the required images. Choose the icons of various sizes from this folder and paste them into the image folder located within the static directory of our project. So let's copy all of these images and let's paste it into our image folder. Now once you have pasted the icons in the image folder of your project, the next step is to include them into the manifest file. Each icon is defined by its source, the image file path name, then the size which is dimension in pixels, then type, the image format and then the purpose. So just like this include as many images as you can so these are all the icons sizes which i am using okay next we will have the start url which will define the url where your pwa should start when launched display determines how your app should be displayed so standalone here means it should appear as a standalone application not in the browser window instead of standalone you can also use full screen minimal ui or browser then orientation defines or specifies the default orientation for the web application portrait means it starts in a portrait mode background color sets the background color displayed when the pwa is loading Theme color is the default theme color for the application. On Android, this is also used to color the status bar. So once we are done with manifest.json file, let's save this file. Before we move forward with including this manifest.json file to the HTML file, let's head over to the browser where the website is running on localhost 1313. Right click anywhere on this page and then let's select inspect. To launch the browser dev tools within the developer tools navigate to the application tab there you will find a section for the manifest file service worker file and storage and now as you will see that it says no manifest file has been detected even for the service worker and storage is also at zero and in cache you will see nothing okay so Let's include this manifest file in HTML. Head back to the code and here you will have this layout folder which is empty for now. And when you open this themes folder, you will have this layout folder in here. Let's just copy this and delete this layout folder which is present in the root directory. And then the folder you copied from this theme folder, paste it into the root directory. So let's open this partial folder and in this you will find this head.html file and here you will have all these meta tags so below this add these two lines of code theme color meta tag will allow us to define the color that will be used for the browser's ui when the progressive web app is launched okay you can replace it with any color code you prefer then the next we are linking the manifest file which is very important for our progressive web app it links to our manifest file which contains metadata about our web application when user visits the website their browser can discover this manifest file and use it to prompt them to install your progressive web app on their device's home screen before moving any further make sure that you save this html file now let's verify if the manifest.json file is functioning correctly. And now when you head over to the localhost 1313 and before even refreshing my manifest file is already here but if you cannot see it what you have to do is you have to refresh the file once again. And here you will see or you will find the details such as the name, 
short name, description and icons have all been retrieved from the manifest.json file we just created. Pretty amazing, right? And in service worker, you will see that we do not have any service worker as of now. But you got this manifest file and it is coming from this manifest.json file which we created in our code. Okay. So now that our manifest is working properly and it is linked and it is functioning, let's proceed to create this service worker file. Okay. So let's close this files for now and close this also. And in the sw.js file, let's start by importing the workbox library, specifically the service worker script from a content delivery network. You can visit that documentation on this link and grab the code for importing the script from here. After that, we will use destructuring assignments to extract specific functions or objects from the workbox library. Register route is a destructuring assignment that extracts the register route function from the workbox routing module and assign it to a variable within the same name register route. Precache and route is another destructuring assignment that extracts the precache and route function from the workbox.precaching module and assign it to a variable with the same name precache and routing. This register route function registers the routes for caching specific types of files such as CSS and JS using the stale file revalidate strategy. It defines a cache name, assets and specifies caching behavior including the maximum number of entries and cache lifetime that is max h seconds and now the second register route function is similar to the first one this code register routes for caching images files such as png jpg gif using the cache first strategy it also defines a cache name images and caching behavior then this function precache and route precaches and route specific urls such as index.html and 404.html in this case precaching involves storing these urls as they are revisions in the cache ensuring they are available offline so basically this service worker file is used to cache css js and image files with specified strategy and cache settings Additionally, it pre-catches specific URLs to improve the online performance and reliability for our progressive web app. Let's save this file and now moving on forward, our next task is to register this service worker file. To do this, open this layout folder and in this default folder, you will find this base of HTML file. And when you scroll down below this script, you have to add one more script here. So just copy all of this code which I have written over here. This script will handle the registration of our service worker. This code will check if the browser supports the service worker and if it does registers a service worker for our PWA. It then logs a message to the console to indicate whether the registration was successful or if there was any error. This will ensure that the PWA is working correctly even offline and provide a better user experience. So let's save this file also. And now to verify the functionality of our service worker file, let's open the browser where our website is running. And you will see here that it has already started loading even before I have refreshed it. Okay. So what you have to do is just navigate back to this application tab and in this you will find this service worker section and you will see that it has been activated and it is running. To stop it, you can stop it from here. This confirms that a service worker file has been successfully registered and is operational. And when you go to the console, you will see that it is pre-caching two files and it is responding to our URL. And you will see this message which says that registration is succeeded okay so scrolling down you will see this cache storage you will find a workbox cache which displays the two files we cached index.html and 404.html additionally under the assets you will find the cached css 
file and then for the images there is this one icon pre-cached okay now what we will do is we will conduct a lighthouse test so click on this arrow and there you will find this lighthouse tab so here what we will do is click on this analyze page report and in the matter of moments the test will generate a report so you will see that finally we have this report available for our review but one thing which i am noticing here is that we did not got the right check on this pwa icon so i don't know why we didn't got this right check because we did everything like we created a manifest file we created a service worker file and for the performance accessibility and best practices and seo you will see that we have good numbers so yeah so what we will do is we will click on this and you can see that we have this all green here okay so here we have this so this is why we didn't got that green check mark on that pwa because in this manifest file we don't have an icon with the purpose maskable so what we will do is we will head back to our code and let's open up our manifest.json file what we will do is we will copy this lines of code and we will paste them over here and in the purpose any let's say maskable okay we should have at least one icon with the purpose maskable it is the requirement of the progressive web app and now when we have saved this file let's open the browser again and what we will do is we will empty the cache and we will hard reload it so let's close this for now and let's analyze this page load again and now i hope we get that green check mark on that pwa so it's generating and let's wait for a matter of moment and there we finally have this green check mark over here on the pwa let's click on it and you will see that this now is green so now everything is perfect so that's pretty much it so let's check again our service worker file it's running and it is activated the manifest file is also running and here you will see that we have two icons because one icon was with purpose any and one icon was with purpose maskable and here you can use as many icons you can and then in cache storage we have this two files all right in asset we have this one file and image we have this 144 dimension one icon so this is pretty much it. So that wraps up the talk. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful, then please do not forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts, please do not hesitate to reach out to me in the comments or you can even join my Discord server. The link for the server will be given in the description box. So I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye and take care.